D-Day, the Normandy invasion, was not only the biggest amphibious landing in world history, it was also the beginning of the end for Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime in World War II. Bud Taylor, who had survived the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor at the beginning of the war, was also destined to be part of the beginning of the end of it. Taylor was aboard the destroyer, the USS Thompson, the second ship to arrive on the Normandy coast, June 6, 1944. He says so many young Americans who were fortunate enough to miss German bullets that day drowned before ever reaching shore. Well, you got more coming behind you, and they'll run over you. And you got this 68, 90-pound pack on your back, you don't come back up. Even though Bud Taylor lived through two of the biggest battles in history, he could never talk about the loss of so many young lives without tears. As a Navy signalman, James Barrett was supposed to hit the Normandy Beach on D-Day and lay low while a tower was built to transmit messages. But fighting was too fierce for building, and soldiers were dying all around him. When an officer saw Barrett was unarmed, he handed him a Tommy gun, and then it was kill or be killed. Well, up off of the beach, I'm going to say probably 100 yards, there was a, a two-story stone building, and there was a machine gun nest in the top, and there was one in the bottom, and that's what was holding everybody up. There were people being killed all around me. And I thought to myself, I'm not going to get out of this alive. So why not just go ahead and do it? And I made a run for that building. And I made it. And I got in the first floor and I wiped out three Germans on the machine gun and I went upstairs and got four more Germans on that machine gun. Barrett's commanding officer nominated him for a Medal of Honor, which never came through. However, he was awarded a Silver Star for his courageous actions. It was the first of many commendations for his service in Normandy and three invasions in the South Pacific, Saipan, Tinian, and Tarawa, and even for his actions off the shore of Key West when his ship was sunk by a German submarine. I know you must have thought the danger was over when you were getting near America, you'd been through so much, and then you get torpedoed right offshore. When my ship was sunk, there were 17 of us out of 220, I think, something like that, that survived. Miraculously, all 17 survivors were rescued after eight hours in the water. Although Barrett spent two weeks in the hospital, recovering from burns suffered in the explosion. But we lost a lot of men up there. I forget how many thousands got killed. Bud Williams almost didn't make it to the beach on D-Day. His landing craft hit a German-laid barrier and began sinking before reaching shore. A naval craft rescued those aboard and carried them to Utah Beach, Normandy's westernmost landing zone. Mostly you know, what you can see is just people running and falling, dead people about all. Williams continued fighting through France and on into Belgium, where the German army was making its last big stand in the Battle of the Bulge. He was awarded four bronze stars for valor. With the German surrender in May of 1945, and the Japanese surrender in August, World War II ended, and Bud Williams returned home, only to learn his brother Dick had been killed in the Normandy invasion on Utah Beach, where he had also landed. Bud Taylor, James Barrett, Bud Williams, and other brave young men fought on the beaches of Normandy and returned home with honor. 10,000 young Americans still lie on French soil, never to return. For Freedom Fighters, Joan Hallmark, KLTV 7 News.